The Divine Walk. Welcome to the Divine Walk podcast. I am your host, Diana. How does the concept of the Trinity work and why it is important to Christian faith, Steve? Okay, and I'm glad to be here once again. Um, one of the things that I want to say is that I think people get the misconception of the Trinity, and we're going to talk about this. Is there a Trinity? Yes, there's three forms of God. Uh, I've often, you know, when I spoke to God, like, you know what I'm saying, I and they would ask me, what form do I want? Do I want Jesus, God the Father? Do I want Jesus or do I want the Holy Spirit? Which they all are one. But they're forms of God. You know, people are going to come in there and they're going to say, oh, she's talking about the Trinity, blah, 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 this and that. Well, I'm going to tell you in the Bible that there's no such thing as a Trinity because it's not in there. But it's a such thing as the Godhead. And that's in, I believe it's called. Kind of Corinthians 13, where four. 14, where Paul writes, May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And this reflects the cooperative relationship among the three persons as well. And, and as Steve said earlier, the, the word Trinity is not in the Bible. And although it describes God as three distinct persons in one unity, the term Trinity itself does not appear in the Bible, but the concept of the Trinity appear in the Bible, but they refer to his as God Ed. And we mm -hmm. all know, let me tell people, there is one God. The Bible clear that there is only one God. And this is a fundamental belief in both Old and New Testament. As Deuteronomy 6 verse 4 say, Hear, O Israel, the Lord, our God, the Lord is one same thing as mm -hmm. Isaiah 45 verse 5 said, I am the Lord and there is no other. Apart from there is no God. So there is only one God as it said. So mm -hmm. the, the, mm -hmm. And two they said Trinity. It forms because God is not a person. God is yeah. a form. Form, so. yeah. And they Go have ahead. their roles. So God the Father... Is recognized as God throughout the Bible. And John 6 verse 27 said, Do not work for food that spoil, but for food that endures eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him God the Father has placed his seal, his seal, approval on. Same thing as John 17 verse 1 said, Jesus addressed God as Father in his prayer, indicating the Father a part of... um. Is divinity and as you realize as well so the the son of god which is jesus christ jesus identify as god and is divine as well i say in the beginning was the word word was god word was god the word referred to jesus as it clarify in john 1 verse 14 and even thomas mm -hmm. said to him my lord my god and the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is what is on the earth. The Holy Spirit also recognized as God. Because Acts 5 verse 3 to 4, Peter said, Ananias, how is it that Satan has so filled your heart that you have lied to the Holy Spirit and have kept for yourself some of the money you received for the land? And didn't it belong to you before it was sold? And after it was sold, wasn't the money at they disapprove what made you think of doing such thing you have not lay such a human be but to god uh we have to understand uh who god is and uh i think it's uh, unity of the three the father the son the holy spirit they mm -hmm. also came up on matthew 28 verse 19 jesus command his followers to baptize in the name of the father son and the holy spirit indicating unity mm -hmm. among the three Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And each person of the God's head has a role in the, the work of salvation and in the life of believer. So the Father is the creator of the plan of salvation and the creator and the planner of salvation. The Son accomplished the work of redemption through his death and resurrection. Our Redeemer who accomplished salvation through his death and resurrection. The Holy Spirit applied the works of salvation to individuals to empower them for godly living and it is unheard and it mm -hmm. applied the benefit of salvation empower believers guide them 
So understand the Godhead can be challenged because it involves holding together um three um distinct form with um one person. But once you have spiritual discernment, you will understand it. That is the problem. And many people doesn't have spiritual discernment. Okay. And the key to recognize that the doctrine emphasizes both unity and and the nature of God as revealed in the scripture. There are some anal analogies that um um some people might use, like you have the water analogy, where water can exist in three forms, liquid, ice, steam but it remain as h2o in the essence and it often used to show how one substance can exist in different form mm -hmm. the idea god is one person who reveal himself in different form rather than three distinct person in one essence well people as use the sun the sun can be thought of three aspects like the the star itself the father its light the sun is eat the holy spirit all three different but yet originate from the same source and this analogy also um, imply, as you realize, even the human mind analogy, where the human mind can be thought of having three aspects, the memory, the understanding, the will. There are different functions, but part of the single mind, this analogy can be problematic because it may imply the three aspects are not distinct person. But uh, you understand what I'm saying. Even the family, I know you have the family consists of different members, the father, mother, and the child, who are united in one family unit, but each member is distinct, but share the same family. You know, same as the three, mm -hmm. as three yes. parts, you have the root, the chuck, you have the leaf, you have the branch, you know, and each part has a different role to play. One of the things I want to, uh, let's go to First John chapter 5, verse 7. It says, uh, let's let's start at six. It says, "This is He who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. Not only by water, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit who bears witness, because the Spirit is truth." In verse seven, it says, "For there are three that bear witness in heaven: the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are." It don't say that these one are three. It says these three are one. So we have to realize the difference. Three forms that is one. But it doesn't say this one is three. And that's what they want to try to flip it and say that these, uh, this one God is three different persons. That's not it. It says these three are one which is the Father, the Word, and the Spirit, you know. Uh, another thing is when you go to, um, I think it is Colossians. Let me see if I can go to that real quick. Uh, Colossians chapter 2, I think it's 19 or something like that. It says, uh, Even um, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit are the Father, the Word, or the Holy Spirit. They are co-equal mm -hmm. as well and co eternal as well. Uh -huh. uh, one of the things that it talks about as I'm, as I'm looking for this verse, it talks about how to understand it. Colossians chapter 2, verse 9. It says, For in him... This is talking about Christ Jesus. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. This is Colossians 2, verse 9. Mm -hmm. And it says, verse 10 says, And you are complete him who is the head of all principality and power. So what this saying is that Jesus Christ, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit dwells in Christ Jesus. So it's inside of him. Mm -hmm. It all dwells inside of him. And then it also says, says he is the image of the invisible God, firstborn over all creation. For in him, all things, for in him, all things were created in heaven and on earth, 
visible and invisible. So it's identifying Jesus as the creator and all things came through him and was through him, just as we've seen him as the angel of the Lord. Whether thrones, men's principality or power, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things and all in him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, which is the church. The church who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. That's what it's talking about. It's not talking about firstborn of creation. It's talking about firstborn from the dead. And he may have preeminence over everything. And it says in verse 19 in chapter 1 says, For it pleased the Father that in him all the fullness of the Godhead should dwell. And all things by him to reconcile all things to himself by him, whether things on earth and heaven, having made peace through the blood of his cross. Did you see that? Mm-hmm. He's the image of God and everything that is God. The Godhead is actually inside of Jesus Christ at all times. That's why God says, I'm not separate from my son. Meaning you can't separate them because the fullness of the Godhead builds Christ Jesus. They're together at all times. So the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit is in the actual image and physical embodiment of Christ. Is that not deep? So John, not first John, but actually the book of John 17, it says, I'm going to read verse 9, 10, 11, and 12. And it says, verse 9 says, I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, for but for whom you have given me. For they are yours and all mine are yours. Referring to himself and the Godhead. And yours are mine. He's going back and forth. He says, I'm glorified in them. Now, verse 11, now I am no longer in the world, but these that are in the world. I come to you, Holy Father, keep them through your name. So he's identifying that the Father's name is the same name as his. Mm -hmm. Those whom you have given me, that they may be one as we are one. Because God is one. And even when we're with God, we're one with him. But we're different. So he's acknowledging that he's one with the Father. And also that we are one with the Father. And that's in verse 11. It says, while I was with them in the world. And uh, hold on. He said, while I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Jesus didn't say he kept them in his name. He said, I kept them in your name. Remember what I told you about um, the father on when they was on Mount Sinai? Mm -hmm. When the Lord was speaking to them, he said, he said, don't rebel against that angel because my name is in him. The mm -hmm. father was saying, hey, my name is in him. He was referring to himself because he says, I'll say it again. He says in verse 12, while I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. He said, the father said to Moses, he said, my name is in that angel. Don't rebel against him because he won't forgive you. And he says, while I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name, the name Jesus Christ, to those whom you gave me and I kept and none of them were lost except the son of perdition that the scripture might be fulfilled. People don't understand that God is truly one. And the son always refers to the father and the father always refers to the son. Exactly. And it is so important for a Christian to, to know um, it as well. Because for me, um, understanding God's nature, the, the God said reveal the relation, the nature of God. It emphasizes God is love. First John 4 verse 8, because love exists within the relationship of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's also important to understand salvation because each verse of the Trinity play a distinct role in salvation based on what I said earlier in John 3 verse 16. And the Son redeemed humanity through sacrifice and the Holy Spirit um, applied the salvation to believers. Ephesians 1 verse 3 to 4. 
and understand the Trinity shape Christian worship as well. Because believer worship the Father through the Son empowered by the Holy Spirit. And this reflects the aspect of the Godhead as well. And even as well, although the, um, the God's head serve as a model for human relationship and community, just as the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit exist in harmony, Christians are called to live in unity, love within their community. So the concept of God is essential to understand who God is and how he related to humanity. And it is for um, Christian belief about salvation, worship, community, love, and those things. So this is why it's very important for Christian to know um, about the God's head. So I want to add uh, two different things. So, and this is why for me, myself, I don't speak the word. I don't say Trinity, but I understand what it means. And this yeah. is why I don't say Trinity. I say yeah. Godhead because Trinity represents three separate things. And that means when you're three separate, that means you're limited yeah that means you're limited that means you have a you have a limit to this one person you have a limit to this person you have a limit to this earth but if it's one there's no limit to one and i'll refer to something in binary code it's a one and a zero yeah one and a zero because it's limitless it's unlimited see god can envelop if you're one you can envelop everything but if you're three different people, you only have a limit before this one has to take the other limit and then before this one has to take the rest. So that means that these, these all three are separate. But when we say God is one, uh, let me give you a verse. Mark 12, 32. It says, right, teacher, the scribe replied when Jesus was speaking to him, you have stated correctly that God is one and there is no other but him. Realize God is one. If you say that he's more than one, then you're limiting God because the three has a three separate has a limit, but one God can develop eternally in the three forms of God. But I, I didn't be different separate person because I personally have an and have a limit. And then you run, and then when you get tired, you tell the third person to run, and then you have a limit. But God doesn't have a limit because He's one. And where one proceeds, one can go without being limited god is one you know what i'm saying he cannot be limited and god can develop the whole cosmos the whole universe one can envelop everything but if you distinctly there's a limit to uh, each individual one so that's why it says these three one and and instead of saying this one is three because we don't worship three persons we worship one god you know, mm -hmm. but our mission is to guide listeners on a spiritual journey deep in their understanding and relationship with God through insightful discussion, personal testimony, biblical teaching. We aim to talk biblical truths and encourage spiritual growth, foster community and support, address relevant issues, promote love, compassion, and to have a Christ-like minded.